Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Knoxville. These are the pregame press conferences for the second round matchup between Tennessee and Toledo. Um, we ask that any me members of the media please state your name and affiliation before your first question. Uh, we start with Toledo student athletes. It's Kara Goss, Sammy McConowitz, and Nan Garcia. And we open it up to questions at this time. Kyle Rowland, Toledo Blade. Uh, just for each of you, could you give like a word to describe Q and just what your first impressions were when you got to Toledo and met her? Um, grit. Oh, I think I'm gonna say crazy, but in a good way. I'm gonna say phenomenal. Yeah, yeah she was just always been such an uplifting person, very high energy, always fun person to be around. Hey, Dave Briggs with the Blade. Um, when you guys were growing up, when someone says Tennessee women's basketball, what kind of came to mind? You go first. Pass on it. Um, and SEC basketball, always competitive program, very skilled, talented, big, um, <laughs> all of the above. Yeah, I'd have to second her. Um, the only difference with me is that I have to admit I wasn't very into basketball when I was younger. Uh, I didn't follow a lot of women's basketball until I got to the like later high school, college level. But I would have to say all those things. Um, yeah, third them, uh, Pat Summit, Candace Parker, uh, all these amazing names coming out of here. Great program, stars coming out of here. Shifting to to the game itself. I mean, obviously, you guys. It was clear the mindset you guys had come in here. You're expecting to be in this position to play Tennessee on Monday. How beneficial of it for you guys was it to have that? <clears throat> excuse me, have that game under your belt, and, and go into you know Tennessee having played on their court already once. I feel like it gives us that experience. Uh, we were there a little bit early. We saw what their crowds like. Um, we're not, not that's not new to us. We have a great uh, fan base back at Toledo, um, so it definitely was nice to get on that court, uh, get the experience we need, and just prepare us for what's ahead. Maria Cornelius, 247 Sports, Tennessee. For all three players, I mean, you, you mentioned Pat Summit, of course, but your coach is very well known. I mean, she, she has credentials that are impeccable. If you could just talk about your coach and what she means to basketball. We feel she means a lot. She's just an amazing person on and off the court. She's very smart when it comes to just running basketball plays, defense-wise. Definitely somebody I look up to, always there for me. Me personally, she's helped me on my shot tremendously. And the fact that she took the time out of her day as a head coach to work with me over the summer just time and time again is huge to me. So she means a lot to me. Uh, I'd have to second everything she said. Uh, same with the shot thing. Um, she's helped me become a better shooter coming out of high school. Like I wasn't looking to shoot a lot. Um, and that's obviously changed a lot. And then she cares about us past basketball. Um, she's always harping on us to get our academics and make sure we stay up on that. Um, and that's just because she cares about life after basketball, and that just means a lot. Uh, yeah, Coach Cullif, uh one of a kind. Um, I couldn't thank her enough for giving me the opportunity to be here, obviously, as a transfer. Um, just an amazing human being outside of basketball. Uh, somebody I'm always going to look for up to and, uh, like, she, she's a role model to us. Tennessee's got a decided size advantage. Uh, how do you counter that? Is it with your ability to get up and down the court as fast as you do? And, and, and how much can that help you along with your shooting ability? Um, I think uh, the most important thing is we just have to play Toledo basketball. Um, you know, no matter what team we play, we have to play the style that we know how to play. Um, size advantage, anything, you know, Toledo basketball is what we need to stick to. And then on top of that, uh, I feel like just playing with grit and playing with heart. Um, if you just play your heart out, I mean, you can beat anyone you want to beat. Um, so if we just play tough and, like she said, play Toledo basketball, I think we have a chance. Yeah, and then to counter off that as well, um, doing the little things is going to be huge in this game because, like you said, we don't have the size advantage. But doing little things like boxing out, going to get the loose balls, that's all going to matter in this game. I know as a team you visited the Pat Summit statue yesterday. Do you think Coach Culp should have a statue on the UT campus now? 
Oh, for sure. Hey, I think when she retires, I think she'll get it. She deserves it. She'll get she something. Does. Hey, yeah. She'll get something. Yeah. But she ain't retiring anytime soon, let me tell you. <laughs> Uh, but, but seriously, you saw a little bit of the Tennessee game in person yesterday. Just your impressions of the, of the Lady Vols, and obviously you guys said all along, you weren't happy just to get here. You wanted to win games. How do you continue that mindset with this next challenge? I just think we uh, need to keep the momentum that we have. Uh, like I said, play our, our game of basketball and uh, play those 40 minutes the best to all our, our ability and see and what happens. Yeah, and I'd say and just staying together as a team, uh, they might go on a few runs, but we can counter that with a few runs of ourselves. Um, just being able to lock down and get those stops and just make some, make some plays out of it. Yeah, and just continue to stay focused and remember what got us here in the first place. Uh, Maria Cornelius again. The five, this Knoxville has become the place for the second year in a row where the five seed comes to die, essentially. Y'all went into that game you know, absolutely fearless going up against a higher seed and a team that had gotten a lot of attention because of their ability to score. Do you replicate that? And this is for all three players. Do you just replicate that tomorrow, same mindset, same realization that the seed, the number by your seed just it doesn't matter? Yeah, kind of like what Nan was saying, we just got to make sure we play Toledo basketball. Mm -hmm. it, it's what it comes down to, you know, all that other stuff, that's all finding games. But we need to make sure that we stay in our identity and we know what we can do. Yeah, I feel like uh, that number next to our name is just, that's just a number. Um, and we're out here to prove that we're better than that. Yeah, uh, like they said, it's just a number. What we truly represent is what is on our jersey and that's what we're playing for. don't want to make this bigger bigger than it is, but chance to go to the first Sweet 16 in Toledo history, playing in the home of, of women's basketball at Tennessee. I mean, is this, is this kind of the stuff, the opportunities you dream of? How do you kind of sum up what this this opportunity is, just like as a kid, just growing? I mean, it's, this has got to be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is a, an experience you dream of as a kid, and I think we're all taking it in. I think we're all enjoying the moment. Not just are we here to play basketball, but we're here to leave, leave, live these experiences. And uh, I think that's very important. And the most important thing is we're doing it with our family, like our teammates. So, Yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible experience. Uh, it's definitely one you don't expect too often. Uh, we're very fortunate to be where we are, but we've also earned it. Um, so I don't know. I think it's just it's fun. I think it'll hit me more when, uh, when we're finally uh, – reach the end of the season, like, and you can stop and look back at everything you've accomplished. But right now, we're just worried about focusing on one game at a time. Yeah, and kind of like they were saying, this is something that I've dreamed of since I was a little girl. Growing up in a basketball family, this is something that I've been surrounded by. So the fact that it's my, um, our turn to be able to experience it and really live it out is something that I can't even put into words. Off the record, for Kirk here, obviously you guys are playing your best when multiple people or scoring the basketball so if obviously yesterday 10 points in the first five minutes kind of gave you guys that spark how beneficial is it a focus for you guys to get as many people involved early in the game as possible um it's huge it's really huge because um we bring out so many weapons just from our starting five from peeping off the bench you know it's really about you can't just stop one you have to be able to be worried and focus about everyone on the floor so which is so key in our team all together <clears throat> For all three players again, and especially Sammy, since you said you came kind of late to basketball, I saw you also went to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Did you get the full experience and maybe even surprised at the depth of this game and its history when you made that visit? Um, for sure. I mean, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. Uh, I actually wish we had a little more time there or just like a free day where I could kind of take my time to read more in depth of everything because I definitely get, didn't get a chance to read everything. Uh, and there was so much information that it just didn't didn't soak it all in. But it was it was definitely incredible to see like where where it was and where we've come. Yeah, it makes you appreciate the game that we play and just the impact that how many people had before we even <coughs> thought of playing basketball and how much they did for us as women's basketball players. Yeah, just like they said, it was a super cool experience, though, and it does make you appreciate the game so much more. Uh, you get to see how much it's developed and how we could keep developing it to to this day. Teresa Walker, the Associated Press. For, for either or all three of you, 
is a little bit out of the box question. Do you prefer low tops or high tops? And because we're seeing on the a colleague on the men's side is seeing a lot of low tops. Uh, and you know, I, I, I remember when everybody was just going with the high tops to protect your ankles. What's your preference and did you, have you made a change during your college career uh, for a particular reason? Nana, this would be your question. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this year I went with the low tops. Uh, been rocking the same shoe all year, just uh, different colors. Uh, Personally, I like the low tops this year. I think they're crazy comfortable, and uh, you know the ankle support. I feel could go both ways. <laughs> I'd also agree. I like the low tops. Um, I've been using those ever since I got to actually high school uh, in Toledo, and they just seem to be the most comfortable for me. Yeah, I like low tops, but I'm definitely an ankle brace girl, so I yes. have to be braced up. <laughs> I mean, this is for you. Obviously, uh, yesterday, you know, you were primary defender on Ashley Jones and did a pretty good job on her. The challenge, obviously, against Tennessee is obviously not going to get any easier. Just how, how prideful are you kind of having that role of primary defender and, and, and kind of feeding the energy off of for everyone else being that, that defender that you are? Uh, I mean, it's still a team thing. Uh, like, yeah, I was on her, but we were all in the gaps helping. Uh, I know Nan helped me with a few doubles. Um, people were digging in, getting tips on it. Um, so it's definitely a team thing, but I just feel like defense leads to offense. Um, so if you work, work hard on defense, then it's going to lead to your offense. And if, like yesterday wasn't a huge scoring night for me, but it was opening up for the rest of the team. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So. Any other questions? complete the circuit here, I'll, Fernan. You mentioned obviously coming over as a transfer, the experience that you brought over from Penn State. And they mentioned obviously you guys playing a, host a hostile crowd at Savage. Kind of getting a feel of what it's going to be like seeing the Tennessee game yesterday. Just kind of what are your expectations for what the atmosphere is going to be like tomorrow and how you guys kind of prepare, plan to prepare to adapt to that? I mean, I think we know the atmospheres are going to be loud. I mean, they have an amazing uh, attendance. So we just got to be prepared, listen, uh, echo each other, and I think we'll be just fine. Anything else? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, welcome back to Knoxville pregame press conference for the second round matchup between Tennessee and Toledo. We're joined by Coach Trisha Cullop here of Toledo. Coach, if you don't mind, start us off with your thoughts about a round two matchup in Knoxville against the Tennessee Lady Volunteers. Well, it's a great opportunity. We're thrilled to be here, uh, but we're not just happy to be here. Uh, this team has been focused for a long time on not only getting into the tournament, but seeing how far we could go. And uh, it's a formidable opponent, unbelievable atmosphere that we're going to be playing in. So much respect for this program, uh, but we're not just here to be here. Uh, so we're looking forward to the challenge. We're going to give it our best shot and, uh, you know, see what happens. Questions? Coach, uh, uh, Teresa Walker with the Associated Press. I know you're focused on your team, but uh, a year ago, a 12 seed played the number five seed Lady Vols and uh, came up just three points short. Uh, is that something that you uh, uh, think about maybe mentioning that, you know, that you can be within shooting, you know, be within striking distance? And, or is that you just, as you mentioned, you focus on your team and the fact that they've got, they have their own goals for this season? Well, I don't think we can look at last year and really rely on that. I mean, every team's different a year from now. I think we have to look at, you know, Kelly's done a fantastic job with her team and and we want to respect them. Uh, I think the biggest things for us are we've got to find a way to get some rebounds. They're big, they're athletic. Uh, we've got to take care of the basketball because they're going to be disruptive with their length. They're great shot blockers. Um, and then, you know, I think we've also got to find a way to protect the paint because they've got more size than we do inside. Um, if we can be effective in those three areas, then I think we could make it interesting. Uh, but this team has got to continue to share the basketball the way that we have and play unselfish basketball. Um, if we do that, you know, and we hit some outside shots, life could be good. Uh, if we're relying on block shots, uh, you know, down on the – that could be interesting for them. Uh, and, and so we're going to have to hit some outside shots. Uh, but I really like the mentality of our team right now. Um, like I said, much respect, but we're looking forward to this opportunity. Tyler Segerman, W2L11 TV. Um, you mentioned the atmosphere of what's going to be like tomorrow. You got a glimpse of that on, on Sunday or Saturday, rather. Uh, how do you approach the, the the factor of crowd noise being a factor in this game as opposed to the first round? Well, our attendance is not the same as the Lady Vols uh, by any stretch. But I will say, it's beneficial that we've played in really loud environments for most of the wow. season. You know, I think. For, for those that don't know, you know, we're top 30 in the country in attendance at Toledo, you know, 10 out of the last 11 seasons. So we're used to crowd noise. We actually don't play as well when we play in quiet environments, uh, probably because they can hear me. Uh, but I, I think that our players enjoy a loud environment. They enjoy an environment where people care about women's basketball. That's here. And so I don't think, you know, will we have to talk a little louder on defense? Yes. Will we have to make sure that we're all on the same page about what we're running offensively? Yes. But I, I don't see it being as big a factor um, because our kids are used to it and they appreciate it. Trisha, Dave Briggs with the Blade. Um, you know, for a generation of women's basketball fans, it's obviously Tennessee and UConn and, and Tennessee came first. When you just, over these years, is when you think about Tennessee women's basketball, what kind of comes to mind? Well, number one, respect. Uh, that's why we took our players up on the hill uh, to take a picture with the statue. That's why, you know, we took them to the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. That's why two or three days before we came down here, I showed them some videos on Pat um, because I have so much respect for not only the current program, but the history and everything that Pat Summit did for women's basketball. You know, I grew up in, in a time where I got to sit beside her in a recruiting trail and uh, and I came down here as an assistant when I was at Xavier to watch individual workouts because I wanted to learn from her. Um, I, I think that it's, it's pretty cool for now my players to see this, even though they don't have all that background. That's why we tried to educate them a little bit before we came down here. Now they do. I think after leaving the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, they, they have a, a full appreciation of what's happened with this program and, and what an amazing historical value that it, that it presents for women's basketball in general. Uh, but we, it's just a great opportunity for us. I, I'll be honest, of all the sites we were sent to, this is a really cool place to be sent because of that historical value. But, but let's, let's not let it be lost on, you know, Coach Harper's doing a fantastic job too. And I can't imagine 
um, the pressure of following, you know, not only Pat, but Holly, what a great job she did. Um, you know, that would be tough, uh, trying to fill shoes of some people that have done some very amazing things in the history of women's basketball, not just Tennessee. Uh, but I think Kelly's done a fantastic job. Maria Cornelius, 247 Sports, Tennessee. Speaking of the statue, I saw Abby Conklin's post. <laughs> and just, I mean, how cool is that? I mean, both with yeah. your Indiana ties and, and yeah. seeing each other again here. Well, ironically, we were getting ready to get on a bus, and I looked over and saw Abby standing there. And I said, Abby, what you all don't know is when Abby visited Purdue, I was her host. And so I said to our kids, I said, boy, I was a bad recruiter that day. Uh, but it was really cool to catch up with her and, and walk up on the hill. And I had her share some stories about Pat Summit with our team uh, so that they could fully appreciate just how intense she was, how competitive she was. And, uh, and Abby graciously did so. But it was pretty cool to see her. And then, you know, as we were leaving the gym yesterday to catch up with Michelle Marciniak. I've known Michelle for a long time as well. Uh, like I said, so many great players. I mean, just look in the rafters in there, and it's who's who of women's basketball. Uh, but it was really cool uh, to run into Abby. Uh, what a great career she had. Q was under-recruited, I would say, in high school. <laughs> um, Understatement. Yeah. You guys clearly had belief. Like, until she signed, were you guys extremely nervous that a Power 5 school would swoop in and scoop her up? Well, at the time we were talking to her, there were no Power 5s in the discussion. Um, Creighton was sitting at the at the court that we initially went to to watch her play for the first time. And, you know, the nice thing about recruiting Nebraska is that, you know, at the time, Omaha wasn't Division I. I believe they were getting ready to transition. So you had University of Nebraska and you had Creighton, and neither one was showing um, full-fledged interest. Creighton was showing up the games, but they hadn't offered. I just kept praying they weren't going to offer because that was a hometown easy. I mean, we're talking her high school must be five minutes from their gym. So I was nervous about that. And then I was also nervous about a couple of Missouri Valley schools that were nearby. But no one was, was laying an offer out except for Omaha. And so we were thrilled that she said yes and, and number two, that she wanted to go away from home. Uh, she is a blessing to our program, um, not only on the court, but as a person, as a leader. Um, I can't tell you how much I enjoy coaching her. And uh, she's special. You don't see not only a player of her athleticism and of her talent, but as her demeanor and her uh, just being an amazing teammate. Um, she does so much for our program on and off the court. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad she's not done. Trisha, just one more trip down memory lane. What's, what's your favorite Pat Summit story? And, and you mentioned being uh, so gracious to, grateful to absorb that knowledge. What was your relationship like with her? Um, well, what I'll say is this. She and my college coach, Lynn Dunn, were very good friends. And so, you know, we heard stories a little bit through Coach Dunn. Uh, but I remember sitting beside her in the stands one time recruiting. And, you know, you're sitting close enough where I've got rental car keys sitting on the, on the bleachers. And as we were leaving, I went out to – and I chit-chatted her with her a little bit because I was watching a team that was playing a Tennessee club team. And so I thought she might be there. I knew she was recruiting uh, someone from that team. And as we got ready to leave, I walked out to the parking lot and I hit, you know, the, the beeper on my car because I didn't know which one. You know, you kind of forget sometimes when you got a different rental car every day what I was driving. And when I hit it, a beamer lit up and I'm like, that's not my car keys. Uh, so I ran back in. I'm like, I think I've got your car keys. I, I don't think she would have been too pleased when she saw what I was driving. Um, but she laughed and, and we had a good uh, laugh about that. But I, I will just say this. What an amazing person, very giving. When I drove down from Xavier University to watch individual workouts, she sat down beside me afterwards. You know, Matthew was her dobo, I think, at that time, Matthew Mitchell. Um, and uh, she couldn't have been more giving of her time. And that's one thing that I think I took from her is just to be very willing to help others as you're going through this process because, you know, that meant a lot to me. And I know that it means a lot to high school coaches that stop by our gyms you know, to be gracious and kind and helpful when you can be. But I can't imagine how many people she helped through the years beyond me um, of helping to grow the game because she cared. And she didn't have to open her doors to us, um, but she did it out of kindness and, and willingness to keep moving things forward in, this, in our game. Trisha, I think you guys are 58 and 10 the last two seasons, and now you've got two top 20 wins. Um, e even against Tennessee in, in this arena, 
Uh, I mean, do you feel like your team has just like the utmost confidence and belief in themselves? I think after that many wins, you do have confidence. I, I think it's a guarded confidence. It's not overconfident by any means. Um, you know, it's a touchy word because when you say that, people think, oh, you, you think you can't uh, do wrong. But we do. I think the, the biggest thing is we're confident and disciplined. And that's what we need to continue to be. We don't try to be somebody we're not. You know, we're, we don't have, you know, Quinesha, I think people could say sometimes is flashy about what she's able to do. But most of it is built on what we call blue collar gold standard. You know, our kids are willing to do all the dirty work. They're willing to box out. They're willing to dive on loose balls. They're willing to box out people who are bigger than them. Um, and it's not always the, the fun glitz and glamour, but they're willing to do it because they know that their role helps us win. And, uh, you know, I think they're confident in that if they continue to do what they do, we have a chance. We always have a chance. And so uh, that's what our message to our kids is, is continue to do what we did to get here. Don't try to be something we're not. And, uh, you know, let's give it our best shot. It took, it took so much effort to get here. As a mid-major, you have to be darn near perfect to get into the tournament. I mean, look, we're talking 17 straight wins just to be standing here. Um, you know, the plight of the mid-major to get in an NCAA tournament is unreal. Uh, there are teams left home today. You know, Columbia comes to mind. There's a couple in our league. You know, BG and Ball State, I think they could be in this tournament. But you have to win your conference tournament or you're deemed not worthy. And that's unfortunate. Uh, I also hope that we start looking at RPI maybe again instead of net. And I'm going to get on that platform just for a second. The net rewards teams that play bad teams and beat them by 40, where the RPI is not built that way. The RPI rewards you for playing a tough schedule. Um, the net rewards you for, you know, unsportsmanship uh, by leaving your starters in to blow teams out. I was built on if you win, you win, and develop your team and substitute and develop those younger players. Um, we were always taught, play the toughest schedule you can, get as many wins as you can, earn your opportunity. And uh, I think the net's teaching people to play easier schedules and beat them by a lot so that your net score can jump up. And we can show numerous examples of that in the net. Um, but I just, it's tough. And it's tough to play, it's tough to be a mid-major and have quad ones tell you no, that they don't want to schedule you. That's why we're so grateful when Carol Lawson said yes. And a few years back when Muffet McGraw said yes, we'll play you. Those calls don't come in very often. That's why when Kara said it in about 0.2 seconds, we said yes. Uh, we don't get those opportunities. and so. People say, well, prove yourself. It's hard to prove yourself when people tell us, no, we won't play you. So I'm so happy we're here. I'm sad that a few other teams we've coached through the years that got to 29 wins weren't sitting here too. And for them, we're playing hard for them too. Maria. Coach, a question about tomorrow's uh, game. Jordan Horston and Rakia Jackson obviously present a tremendous challenge. When, when you watch them on film, what, what kind of challenges do you see for your team? Well, defensively, they're disruptive. Uh, length, athleticism, quickness, uh, ability to cover a radius with their length and wingspan, but also ability to score in a variety of ways. Um, I think it's important that we try to keep them in front of us. We can't, we can't be undisciplined defensively with our footwork. Um, but their challenge, uh, it's, it's, that's a great way to say it. It will be a challenge. But I also think their ability to get to the boards. Um, you're going to have to, you're going to see our kids have to be willing to sacrifice their bodies to make sure they're not getting to the boards. Uh, watching film, both of them. And, and I will say this, located where we are, we're very familiar with them. We watched them grow up. You're talking about a kid from Michigan and a kid from Ohio. We know who they are. Uh, and obviously, you know, Walker's from Western Michigan. Uh, we played against her back in the day. So this, and even Powell is from Michigan. We watched all these kids grow up. And so it's not a surprise. Um, but our kids are looking forward to the challenge. Do we think it'll be easy? Absolutely not. We're going to have to work our tails off. But I do think it, you can't do it with one person. It's going to have to be our whole team playing team defense. If we, if we went out and played one-on-one, -on -one, they'd win every time. Um, but the good thing is we get to play five-on-five. -five. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.